Welcome back to MMA Al Dente. I am the guy who picked Chuck Liddell to defeat Jeremy Horn the first time. And I'm here to talk about Toshiomi Kazama versus Garrett Armfield. Garrett Armfield is 8-3 as a pro, 26 years old, and he's given up one inch of height but has one inch of reach over 26-year-old Kazama, who is 10-3 as a pro. Kazama, he's a very slick grappler. He's got three TKOs, five submissions, and two decisions. I would expect him to have more submissions. But he moves around really, really well on the ground. Very crafty grappler. He's got two hammerlock submissions. A hammerlock, like you'd see Mr. Perfect use in the WWF. He uh, got submission wins like that. Or, you know, like Shinya Aoki would use uh, in MMA. And he does have a bit of Aoki in him, if you're familiar with Shinya Aoki. He's just a crafty grappler. Not nearly as dominant, but uh, certainly a very crafty guy. Dangerous from any position, and especially when he's fresh, he moves around like a fish in water. He, on the flip side, is a little weak on the feet. Uh, not that he's weak technically or whatever, but he's got a weak chin. Uh, you know, it's responsible for two of his three losses. He's got two knockouts, and they both come in the last year and a half, and in his last three fights. He was knocked out in his last one to Rinya Nakamura. And before that, he was knocked out to this guy Saito with a flying knee in round two. Flying knee is a flying knee. But uh, the knockout to Rinya Nakamura... I said it when I talked about Rinya in my last video I made about him uh, when he fought that fight against Kazama. The guy's like Henry Cejudo. He's got the potential to be Henry Cejudo where he just hits like Mike Tyson and he's an awesome wrestler. So, there might not be a lot of shame in getting knocked out by Rinya Nakamura. But still, even in that 30 seconds, I didn't like the way he looked. It looked like the first punch hurt him and he was kind of half dancing for uh, a bit before that finish. But, either way, he's 26 years old. It's not like, uh, you know, he's 36. But, moving forward, that's definitely his biggest weakness in my book. I'd say if this guy loses another five fights, I know you've heard me say this type of shit before, but if he loses five fights, three of them are by knockout. That's my prediction. Uh, but again, on the ground, he's very, very dangerous, and that's where Garrett Armfield has shown a little weakness. Garrett Armfield's got a record of eight and three. His three losses come two via submission, one via decision. He was submitted by Matteo Vogel with a rear naked choke in round two and David Onama with an arm triangle choke in round two as well. That was in his last one in the UFC. Uh, he took that one on short notice, to be fair. Stepped up, I forget who pulled out, but Garrett Armfield actually had fought Onama as an amateur and lost a decision, but he was familiar with him and gave him a good fight. And he stepped up in weight just uh, thinking he could... Uh, make something work there and he ended up getting overwhelmed and submitted which I don't want to attribute it to the fact that he didn't have a full camp but usually when a guy gets finished later in the fight it's more excusable so there's that and his decision loss comes to no scrub either Ronnie Lawrence Ronnie Lawrence very good fighter uh very good wrestler and Ronnie Lawrence if he happens to be watching this, which I know he's not, so I don't even know why I'm wasting your fucking time, but I wish him well, because he told everybody, he announced via whatever the fuck, that he's going to be taking a year off or so, or some time off for staff infections or something. Guy can't get healthy, so that sucks. But anyway, uh, Garrett Armfield, he's got five TKO victories, two submissions, one decision, and of his seven finishes, six of them come in round one, the other one in round two. So he's a dangerous enough guy, even if he doesn't hit like uh, Rinya Nakamura or Henry Cejudo. I'm sure his flying knee meets the uh, power requirements to knock out anybody, including a guy like Kazama. But uh, as far as his punches go, again, he may not be the most powerful guy, but the guy can hit and he throws really good, accurate, straight punches. He's got good technique. And I think uh, even without a knockout, he wins the stand-up fight against Kazama. And... With somebody's chin failing, certainly I'd be picking Garrett Armfield. But this one here, how I'm playing it, I'm playing the under. The under is plus 150 at a round and a half. I don't usually like betting on a round and a half, especially the under. I'm more inclined to bet on the over for that. But for this one here, I think Kazama, his primary weakness is his chin. And if he gets the fight to the ground... 
which he can definitely do. He had a fight, I should have mentioned, with this guy, Kara Maui, uh, whatever the fuck. That's his first name. The guy's got a last name that you wouldn't fucking believe. But that was on the uh, road to UFC. I was about to say the Contender Series. And Kazama looked really good early on, ripped him to the mat, and then his wrestling started to fade down the stretch. He still won the grappling battle overall, but uh, the wrestling wasn't there for him down the stretch. So I think Kazama, if he's going to get a finish, it would more likely be in round one, especially when he's, you know, fresh and is able to get any sort of a positional advantage on arm field. And also just collisions happen and shit. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, him getting on the ground is going to put him in a great position. Not a great, you know, it's not like Garrett Armfield is shit on the ground. He's been taken out by two good guys in the second round. But Kazama is uh, uniquely dangerous. He's dangerous in a lot of ways that a guy like David Onama is not. So I played the under uh, a round and a half, plus 150. I don't love it, but I I like it. So I threw a sprinkle on that. And then uh, it's TKO for Garrett Armfield and submission for Kazama. You know, I think it'll happen the first two rounds, plus 600 and 900 for Garrett Armfield, plus 800 and 1000 or 1,000 for Toshiomi Kazama. That's just how I played this because I think, uh, you know, each guy is capable of exploiting the one major hole the other guy has. So, uh, prop bets galore. Like, share, subscribe, all that horse shit. Check out my other videos.